Okay, <clears throat> walk and talk. Why walk and talk? Because I walk. And I really do think it's a tremendously undervalued uh, exercise, activity, process, opportunity. If you're blessed, fortunate enough, whatever term works for you, to be able to ambulate, to be peripatetic, to be able to walk, then you really should. Now, uh, if you're like, yeah, no kidding. I already know this, Cuomo. Thank you for being Captain Obvious. Well, the question then becomes, well, how do you use walking? Because there are a lot of different adaptations. Um, it's good as a straight calorie thing. It's good you can stop and do calisthenics, which I do uh, often. Uh, how? I, I mean, you can bring a band with you. I, sometimes I carry a heavy dumbbell. Um, stop, do push-ups, air squats, burpees, whatever. Uh, you can do interval stuff when you walk. You can walk and then jog a little bit and walk again. Or and what I want to talk about today is just the uh, opportunity to think. Food for thought. There's a reason, even if they're meant as insults or snide, when someone says, hey, all right, all right, I've had enough. Go take a walk. Coach is saying to you, walk it off when you were hurt. Take a hike. Okay, those are disparaging, but also there's something to digest there. Time is helpful. Uh, the count to 10 before you react. Time is helpful to process, to think. Walking is very assisted, assistive of that. And look, I mean, if you're lucky enough to have a beautiful area here as we hit autumn and all the different chemical changes from temperature and timing that create these beautiful leaves and foliage, awesome. Except for my noisy ass neighbor. Anyway, so the ability to think. Food for thought. So let's start with this. You can just work on whatever's going on in your head. Now, for those of you who are open to me being able to help you with this process, I think that a great place to start is with yourself. We have a problem in our society that has been exploded, certainly exacerbated by social media, of looking externally to judge, to justify, to reconcile things that should be internal. You know, this is why talk shows worked so well in the 80s and even into the 90s. Social media, I think, has taken away some of this energy, which is why you've seen such a drop in daytime. There are other reasons, too. Stratification in the market, etc. But the idea of somebody being worse than you and the, what that does for your sense of self, this is very simple psychology. It's been written about forever. It's easy for you to Google and check all this. It's not like I'm thinking it up or discovered it myself. It's just important to reflect on it something you do while walking the appetite on social media for the toxic negativity as a proxy for insight judging the idea of taking things out of context for a self-serving purpose of being able to attack there's a misplaced sense of empowerment in that keyboard warrior now this isn't everybody some people are there for good reason to learn to share good things, to bring attention to what matters. There's great um, instant observation and eyewitness ability on social media during breaking news. It can be valuable. You got to check it. But then there's this other aspect that is just toxic. And luckily, social media is not reality. Now, that's for two reasons. One, a lot of the active users and people who engage are part of motivated minorities, fringe, fired up. And most of us on social media are passive. And that's good, okay? And that's what social media plays to. And in fact, the larger media makes this mistake of playing to it as well. 
But if you stick with the self, you're going to come to two quick discoveries. One, and this is a big practice of the stoicism that I lean on very heavily. You can look up what stoicism is. For me, it's kind of how a lot of you use religion. It's a set of rules for me. And yes, I choose to believe in aspects of the divine, but that's for me. I'm not putting that on you. It doesn't matter if you believe that. But if you start with what do you control and judging yourself and saving for everybody else indifference or openness, it's a very important thing to do. And why? Because the point should be to get better. And so many things are under your own control. And most importantly, what is within your control is what to pay attention to and what not. And you don't control what other people do. You control very little of what happens in your life. But you have complete control over what you decide whatever happens means to you. So, for instance, somebody trips you and you fall. That's on them, right? Sure. Um, and people say, you should be angry. It's up to you. Someone made me, oh, he pissed me off. She pissed me off. No. You pissed you off. They gave you an opportunity to be pissed off. You took it. Easy to say, hard to practice. A lot of these things are. A lot of things that are self-evident. A lot of things that are true. A lot of things that are obvious are difficult to put into practice. If life were a written test, I'd get 100. On the practical, I'm lucky to pass on a regular basis. And that's another thing. You have to have clear eyes on where I'm coming to you from. I am flawed and flailing. Uh, I don't come from a place of arrogance. It's one of the easiest missteps someone can make in analyzing me. I don't think I'm better than anyone. Um, I am constantly trying to get better. I'm constantly amazed by how I repeat the same mistakes and behaviors that I don't like. And I think a lot of us are like that. And there's no reason for me to spend time on the external and other people and what they did and what they say and who that's me. I decide what matters and what doesn't, what to take in and what not. I don't control what other people do or say. I control how I react to the same and what I allow what they do and say to mean to me. And that is a very important idea. Stick with the self. Stick with what you control. Now, by the way, I'm walking uphill. All right. So give me a break on the, why are you breathing so heavy? <laughs> uh, and also allergies are killing me. So the first point is the most important. Stick to yourself. Don't get caught up in judging. Judging is not strength. Save it for yourself. Think about what you control. Think about your behaviors. You want to get in better shape? You want to lose weight? Eat less, move more. Assuming you're healthy, that's going to work. Uh, you want to get smarter, read more. You want to know more about a subject, research it. You want to have better arguments for your friends or your foes. Listen to what they say. Listen to what they say. Take their arguments. Do your homework. And then you'll understand how to have better arguments. And you may have points of agreement. And they may be right and you may be wrong. Start with the self. Stay with the self. Exhaust all opportunities to control whatever it is. And make yourself better. And judge yourself. Social media is not reality. It's an exaggerated form of it. Often motivated minorities that the rest of us in the media give way too much attention to. That's on me. That's on us. I don't do it now. I point it out to you. That's a part of my own self-reflection. So when I walk, I think about these things. Why am I upset? What can I really do? What does it really mean? I'll go a little longer than 10 minutes, okay? Tell me if the time is relevant. I don't walk 
for 10 minutes. I usually walk for about an hour. I don't have time. You make time for what matters. I get up earlier. I stop drinking. Why? Because I have a drinking problem. No, that's about judgment. That's about attack. It's about criticism. It's about people wanting to show that I'm somehow less than. That's easy enough. Just ask me. I'll tell you. And I don't shy away from having a problem. I'm the guy. I don't know how many people in the news media talk to you about using therapy and needing it. Not in the way Herschel Walker did. Like it was some passing aspect. Oh, I was sick, but now I'm fine. I don't know about that. A lot of aspects of mental health are chronic and you got to deal with them all the time. I didn't even like how the question was asked about what do you say to the voters who have questions about whether or not you can lead given your mental health problems? Would you say that if you had diabetes? Yeah, it's a little different because it affects how you think. A lot of illnesses do that. The idea that If you are dealing with something mentally or emotionally, that somehow that makes you lacking or broken. It's just not true. It's not true. It depends on what it is. It depends on how it affects you. And it depends on how you deal with it. See, our problem is because of that stigma, you don't want to deal with it. You don't want to say it. You know, I make it as a joke, but it's true. My male friends will talk about testosterone, IBS, problems going to the bathroom, hemorrhoids, all this stuff, ED, (laughs) and what they do for it. But you talk about mental health, they always look at me sideways. Now, not my closest friends because they know me and they understand how I understand it and that I don't respect uh, the stigma and I don't have shame in my game. I have plenty of shame and disappointment about what's going on. You're walking faster than I am. Now I got to pick it up. Um, There are a lot of people who walk where I live. We have these beautiful roads. They walk together. And once they see me on a regular basis, they don't see me as much of a threat because I'm like lumbering around. (laughs) I walk like, you know, some kind of injured bear. So I believe in being honest about it. Not that everybody has to know your business. But I'm not going to shy away from it because if there's a chance I can be better, I got to take it because I got a lot to improve and a lot to work on. And we don't focus on that enough. We'd rather focus on others. Take them on on social media. Social media is not reality. You people don't talk to each other like that in real life. If you did, everybody would have less teeth. We don't do it. Why? Because social media takes away... One of the key elements of confrontation, which is owning what you say and do to the actual person. This is uh, like with most attributes of aggression. This is seen in more exaggerated fashion with men. All these guys who want to kick my ass. Never happens in person. Why? Because I'm so big and tough and I fight. No, because people are civil in person. And men are very simple. I have plenty of women who come up and they are agitated and aggravated and they think that I'm about something or trying to do something that is often not the case. But they don't care what size you are. Men do. Men are simple animals. And one of the greatest things about self-defense, and you'll hear me talking about Tony Blauer and the Spear System and all these other guys that I have actually studied with and try to learn from. Size is irrelevant. Women who have been victimized, men who have been victimized... You can take somebody out as a threat very easily. It's all technique and determination. And again, it's about the self. And it's about dealing with yourself and thinking about how you can improve and do better and be better as opposed to, yeah, but this is really on her. I mean, she drives me crazy. This is really about him. He's just a jerk. There's no talking to him. Do you want it to be better or not? What do you control? Start with that. There's plenty there. How are you better in that relationship? How do you change that relationship? How do you communicate? You know, one of the beautiful things about walking, and by the way, you could do this doing static cardio or lots of other things also. 
think about it. What did I say? Why did that happen? Why did I do that? I mean, how often do you have a moment where you've behaved in a way where almost in the moment, assuming you're not drunk, you say, shoot, why am I doing this? I wish I could stop. Now, my mind tends to wander a little bit, especially when I'm walking, and that's good. Let it flow. Things connect to each other. Or not, and then it brings you back. I had said I've stopped drinking, not because I have a drinking problem. And I'm not going to abuse that because I respect people who are battling with abuse of substances. I'm not going to cheapen it by giving myself some pass. But when you have problems, when you're in crisis, when you're dealing with things, I just don't think booze helps. I think the reason we do that is to self-medicate and to take ourselves out of that moment, out of that, that emotion. And I want to be present. I want to deal with it. I think that matters more. So that's what I'm doing. Um, well, when are you going to drink again? I don't know. When I want to. I'm lucky that way, right? I don't believe in luck, by the way. What happens is what you make happens or how you respond to what happens. Preparation meets opportunity, maybe. But um, I don't have an addiction. I don't have an inability to determine when I start and stop when it comes to that. I'm fortunate, let's say. So it doesn't matter to me. I don't need it. If I don't need it, although I'll tell you what, I have really started... My diet has gone in the garbage. And I think that's about sugar replacement. I think it's about, again, some kind of self-medicating. It always happens at night. It's after the show when I'm processing everything that's happened, what was right, what was wrong. I try to really limit what I'm taking in in terms of how people feel about the show. I want the feedback. Absolutely. I listen to my team. I got an amazing team. You guys get to see Dusty and Chelsea on the control room camera. I've known Dusty for a long time. She doesn't let me say how long anymore. I went to law school with her brother. We've known each other forever. She's a big reason I got back into this business the way I have with the podcast and News Nation. But I have an amazing team that she put together largely. And I take the feedback and we're getting, just getting our feet underneath ourselves. But I have been eating a lot of sugar. And I'm not even a sweets guy. I know what that's about. Talk to my therapist about it. Think about it. It's about me. It's about what I control. Literally, what I put in my face. So think about that. That's why we like social media. It's give crap to other people. Let's judge them. Stick with yourself. Stick with your own ideas. Your own behaviors. How do you make things better? How do you understand things better? How do you get closer to where you want to be? You don't need other people to be worse than you. If you're satisfied and engaged with your own measure for yourself. Easy to say, hard to do. Especially in our society, in our media culture, where it's all about gotcha. And owning. And bringing people down. And showing people in exaggerated form and out of context. You know, there's no need for it. But it's not about a need, it's about a want. And you control the want. It's not psychobabble. These are all self-evident truths that people have known for a long time. It's just about whether or not you want to focus on them. And life is complicated, you're complex. And that's okay. But you can focus on these things if you choose to. How long should I walk if I want to walk? You do things as long as you can. You make time for what you want to make time for. I get up earlier now. And, I mean, right now, it's midday, but I'm going to go fishing. Taking a walk first. Clear my head. Uh, I don't want to lift weights all the time. I don't want to do high impact, high intensity all the time. I love to walk with other people when I can. But it's also a great way to be alone. And to think and to think about what I think of things, what I want to share, how I want to relay it. I have conversations with myself. I try not to do that out loud. (laughs) And kind of play it through what works in this, what doesn't work in this. I listen to books. Uh, I've really leaned into the stoicism. 
studied it in college, got back into it when I was in law school, got back into it uh, a couple different times. But you know why I move away from it? It's because it's hard. <laughs> because I'm undisciplined. Because I don't want to stick with it. Because I find excuses. And it's easier to just get away. And I'm too busy. Blah, 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 blah. It's all lies we tell ourselves to deal or not deal with the simple things. You want better relationships? Listen more. Be kind. Do things for people. Be present. Make time to be about what matters to them. It's pretty easy. Do we do it? I don't know about you. Me? Not enough. Selfish bastard <laughs> that I am. And that'll come to me when I'm walking. Oh, I haven't talked to this guy. When's the last time I checked in with this sibling? Then you start thinking. Sometimes I just listen to my footfall. And just doing that, things just start coming into your head. Oh, I forgot I wanted to do this. Oh, I never finished that. Hey, you know who I want to see? One of these authors that I love has a book out now called Stillness is the Key. His name's Ryan Holiday. He's hard to get a hold of, but he's busy. Stillness is the key. And that has lots of different applications. One of them is that you need time when you're not thinking about that thing that matters to have some of the ideas about that thing, that enterprise, that relationship, that choice that will come to you. But I'm telling you, I only have one point for this walk and talk and it's start with yourself. Start with yourself. One, you control so much more in terms of what you do and not do and say and not say and think and not think than you may be appreciating. And the second thing is you need to see this this lust, this hyperactivity of engagement on social media or with others for what it is, for what it is. And importantly, what it isn't. You're not getting better by telling me I suck. <laughs> it doesn't make you more right. It doesn't make you more anything, except potentially more of a jerk, more of the problem that you supposedly oppose. And you notice I'm not talking politics. Why? Why ruin a walk? No, I care about politics. And I think that it's so important in our society, in a democracy, in an evolving culture. You know, and I give us a lot of breaks. I don't judge the way a lot of other people do. Because one, I just don't see it as productive. But two, I give us a break because we're just getting going here. What concerns me is when I see cyclical problems. That's what you see with race, with have and have not. And with just tolerance, we have big struggles with tolerance. Human beings do that because they don't, one, practice what they preach. Hypocrisy is a huge part of humanity. And two, they don't stick with themselves. They worry about everybody else. Judge others. Right? Less than. Threat. Why? That's our ignorance. It's the projection of our own animus. It's the projection of our own insecurity. Start with yourself. What do I control? How can I be? What can I do? That's what I'm doing. We tell it to our kids all the time. Don't worry about them. Worry about you. If the guy told you to jump off a bridge, would you? Right? Be in control of yourself. Of your own choices. Of your own behavior. There's plenty of work to do there before you involve yourself with anybody else in judging them, save judgment for yourself. Now, externally, instead of judging, what you should do is be exercising critical judgment. Be open, listen. Get away from confirmation bias. So that's what I got. Start with yourself. I hope you enjoyed this walk and talk. 
I hope you use it while walking or doing cardio or just as food for thought. Let me know what you like about it, what you don't. And I'll start here and we'll see where it goes.